Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to be talking about live components. Now this is a layering technique that you can use to carve your page up into pieces, but each one can manage its own event, and that means it can have its own changing state. It's going to be an exciting episode, so let's get started. Now remember, this is the scenario that we were working on. Maybe we're doing some type of a game night for youth, and maybe we have a 12 table setup, and we were going to use an increment to score each one of these individual tables. So that means we're going to have a couple of things that we have to do. The first thing is that we're going to have to format each one of these tables as its own card that has its own layout Maybe it has a button for each one, and maybe it also has a header. And we already know how to do this. We're going to use a functional component to do that work. But there's another problem too. Right now, this page only tracks one state, and that is this state right here of the counter. This eight is actually in the socket for the page. Now that's not going to work for us. What we need is a component that knows how to not only track its own state, but to advance it, whenever we click on any of these individual counters in any of these individual tables to keep our score. So that's what we're going to work on next. First thing that we want to do is add a browser tab and let's look for Tailwind. And the concept that we want is a card. Yeah, so something like this. This won't be exactly what we need, but it'll be close. And we'll just grab this individual chunk like that. And it has some nice elements like rounded corners and a little shadow that we can take advantage of. And we're going to go ahead and drop that into our application. So I'm going to bring that back up here. I'll bring up our application. And remember, we had this count application and we already had a couple of components. One was the game grid, and the game grid called a bunch of numbered grids in there. And then we had this little judges table thing that doesn't add anything. Let's go ahead and delete that. And we're going to replace this code in here by dropping this in. Well, that's a mess, isn't it? So I'm going to drop that in again. Huh. Third time is a charm. Okay, that's a little better. Now we can go ahead and indent this just a smidge. And this is probably a good place here to drop in a header with with some with maybe our table number in there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that header in right here. So let's have the text of maybe uh, 2x and I'm going to say table and then we were passing the table number right here so we ought to be able to just drop in that table number just like that okay and I'm going to go ahead and save this much but there was an image that we didn't necessarily need there's also these words here that have that have the gray shadows and we're going to need a couple of these. Probably one that says increment. And one that says decrement. So I'm going to go ahead and save this much and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, this is already starting to look good. You can see the little shadows around these individual pieces and then the coldest sunset title. So we probably want to drop our, our table one into there and then add maybe a current score in there or something like that. So we wanted to take this table number and we wanted to drop it in here. And maybe this is better as an H2. Um, you know, if, if we were trying to search engine after, well, I guess we're not, I guess a div is going to be fine in there. And then we probably want to inside this div right here. Maybe this is a P div. And 
and then we'll have a count. And I'm just going to hard code a count of zero into each one for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up. OK, so we have our increment and decrement there. We have a score. We have each table. So this looks pretty good to me. Now, the first thing that I want to do is start to extract some concepts. Well, one of the things that we're going to need to do is build in increment and decrement buttons. So why don't we go ahead and just build the increment and decrement handlers for this little component, and then we'll go ahead and steal this code and drop them into the individual cards that we can extract for our other component. OK, so there's the handle event of increment. Let's make another one that looks like this. A handle event for deck. And so this is going to be counter.deck. And we already have a count in here. So there's a counter dot new. So there's a count inside the individual socket. So I bet that we could just show the count here. So let's see what what that's doing to us so far. Key count not found. What do we actually have in there? Uh, yeah. So here is the key in the in the socket of signs. Um. So we didn't pass the count in when we were rendering this thing. So um, so basically, when we were rendering this, we rendered that in here. OK, so table number T. And let's say the count is also equal to T. And so I'm also going to need to make a count available. And then let's say default is going to be zero. So I don't have to specify that if I don't want to. Let's go ahead and save that much and run it. Yeah, so I'm setting the count up as the table number. But what happens if I don't pass that in? So we are mapping over these things and then we're passing in a count. If I leave that alone, I bet that I'll just get a count of zero based on my default. So let's go ahead and try that much out. Yeah, so this is looking good. So I'm showing the individual count and I've got the increment. We can build a decrement button. It should be relatively straightforward. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's one of the buttons. Let's see if we can what this is going to look like. So that looks good. That's going to be a deck. And we're going to pass in. So we need a Phoenix click of deck right there. OK. So let's save this much. Now we have the increment and we have the decrement and that's working fine. And so right now, you can immediately see that there is a problem. Now, we could try to update this score by passing this count, but watch what happens. So now we're going to try to pass in the individual count, right? So we're saying game table number is there, and then the count is equal to, and let's say count. But if I save this much, count is a struct. What's wrong here? Oh, we need a counter.show, right? Oh, there we go. OK, so we can we ought to be able to run this one now. So now I can increment and everything is getting all the tables are being scored at once. And so what we want to do is transfer the intelligence of these two buttons to these elements on the page right here. And so the first step that we can take we need to start extracting the concepts from this live view to an individual component. And that's what we're going to do next. OK, so 
to build the live component, let's go ahead and open up a new tab. And now I'm going to say Phoenix Live Component, just like that. Yeah, and this is the right version that we want, 0 0.18.11. The, the reason is that the, the component rendering style has changed a little bit from Phoenix version to Phoenix version. This is the one that we want to pick up. And notice that we have something that looks like this, where this render is doing nothing more than the work that we were doing before. So we're going to have to establish a socket, and we'll do that in a little bit. But we're also going to have to establish this render and we're going to have to render the live component in this way rather than the way that we did before. And we're going to pass the same type of arguments that we did right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that much started. So I'll copy this code. Okay, and so what I want to do is create account live directory. I've already done that. And I'm going to drop that into, I'm going to drop the components that this needs inside there. So I'll click this. I'll say counter.ex. And then we want to drop the component in here. Ours is going to be namespaced. So that is bigger. Web dot and count live, that one right there. And we're the counter. And we're going to use Phoenix component, and this is going to give us access to this hex. And then we're going to want to drop in the render code that we had there. <laughs> I guess I didn't select it yet. That would help, right? So let's go ahead and, and render it the same way that I do with this function right here. Well, I guess that means I could just replace the inside. So this is the individual game. Remember, this is the card with all of those Tailwind classes. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring those along with me. So I'll paste that in. That looks good. And now we need to render this much. But before we do that, we're going to set up our socket the same way that we did before. But rather than putting this in a mount, we're going to put this in an update because the component lifecycle is a little bit different. We want to call the update because that will be fired every time that the outer page renders for me. And that's going to allow us to reset the counts if the user intends for that to happen. Or basically we'll establish new counter state that'll show up on the page every time that there's a call to that render, which is typically what you want to happen. So we're going to do that next. Let's talk about what needs to happen here. So I'm going to go to my live view. So I have this increment and the decrement. Really, this stuff is going to move into this, these increment and decrement spans right down here. And that means that we're going to have to do something else to support them. So rather than passing that data in, we're going to set it up in our mount function. But we're not really going to use a mount. If you'll notice, live components have their own life cycle. These two are both constructors. And this is the converter, just like before. So one time setup that doesn't have any data that I pass in, that's going to happen in mount. So setup that happens after one time setup that's independent of my socket, but has values that I pass in, that's going to happen in update. And since we're going to pass in a, a table number, we have to use update. So let's go ahead and get that one started. So I'm going to say, so def update, and that was a science, and then the socket. So don't let this science confuse you. All this is, is the map of data that's coming in with the function. And so then I'm going to take OK, and I'm going to return a socket. But I need to modify the socket, so I'm going to go ahead and, and um, pick up a new line, and I'm going to pipe that to say, hey, assign, 
everything that was in this map right here called a signs. And hey, go ahead and assign account with with a counter dot new. And then I need to alias I need to alias that counter. This needs to be a counter show since this thing in here, this counter right here, that is a struct. And I need something that is going to pluck out the count for me. So I'm going to use the counter dot show. That's my reducer. And I'm going to show that the, the table name that comes in right here, that's my converter. And so I can save this much. And now I can go ahead and render this with a dot live component. And that's going to close just like a regular tag. Let's fill in the details next. So you probably noticed that we're wearing out this documentation as it should be, right? And so this is the, this is the update function that we were rendering. So this is going to happen. Any time that the page renders, that actually renders the component in the first place. And I need to establish the live component. We're going to do it in this way. So there's the mo module that implements it. There's the ID for the page. We'll probably have to throw in a table name or something like that. And then there's the content. So let's go ahead and do that much. So bring up my editor. Live component is going to look like this. The module is going to be the counter, but this is going to be count live dot counter, right? So we probably need to alias dot count live like that. Okay, so and then so I have a module and then there's an ID. And let's go ahead and interpolate that. And so let's give that an ID of table, of table, and then let's drop in the T right there. And this is string interpolation. I can, I can have any Elixir syntax in here that I want. So this interpolation is managed by the Heeks. This is just a string, so this is regular string interpolation and then the content that I want is nothing more than this table number just like that right so I'm gonna grab this table number send it through I'm going to delete this one and now when I save it if we're lucky we'll see this live component do the rendering so I'm going to bring up this yep looks like we're rendering and then I ought to be able to post a message from the component. So let's go ahead and try to do that just to make sure that we're getting the version that's in the component. So I'm going to say P and hi from component. Okay, I'm going to save this much. Okay, so we are getting that from the component. And if I increment, these are no longer being updated. Why? Because we are establishing them in the live view. And the state that is getting updated is only the state that is in the live view. And the live component is not processing its own events yet. And we're going to fix that problem next. So the first thing that I want to do is delete this extra code that we added here. And now we need our own handlers right and all they're going to do is do exactly what they did in the count live so I'm just going to steal these handlers because I won't need them anymore right the events are going to come in somewhere else so I'm going to delete that much and I'm going to drop them into the counter just at the end right there and so all this is doing is taking the socket that I updated right here in the update. And when an increment command comes in, I'm doing a counter.increment here. 
I'm doing a counter dot decrement here. So that works exactly the same way. Now I do have to do a little bit of work on my components though. So this is, these are pretty ugly. I think I want to take these, I want to extract them to their own components. So let's call them a buttons. account button it's going to take an assigns and then I'm going to say this has a slot okay just to verify that syntax we're just going to go over here and it looks like the game grid has a slot of an inner block the render inner block looks like that. So let's go ahead and grab that much. And I'm going to render the inner block just like that. And these individual spans that look like this, I'm going to take and I'm going to drop in there. Then I'm going to take this And I'm going to take the inner block just like that. Actually, I'm going to keep that just pretty closed. But the way to do it, I think, and hold everything together is like that. And then we'll pick up the class like that. Like that, right? And so that's going to render my inner block. And then I probably want to take what happens on click. So attribute. Click is going to be a string. Uh, we don't need to make that required, right? Then I could say something like Phoenix click and then I could pass it click right and now I need to add the sigil on top of this to make sure that this renders the way that we expect it to okay because the output of one of these components has to be a a heek sigil and so now, rather than all of this mess, I could say, give me a count button. And then I want to say click equals, and then we're going to pass ink for that one. And then I can take another one of these, and this is going to be a deck, and that is going to be a deck for that one. And I don't need this at all. That's starting to look prettier. And eventually what I could do is, is take these and relegate them to some faraway place where I don't have to deal with all this ceremony. Probably some component library or something like that. So this is going to give me individual buttons and let's see what those things look like so now i could take these could reload just to make sure they're loading correctly and i can inspect this element okay so let's we're gonna have to, to go spelunking into here so there's one of those cards right and there's the div and there's the increment and decrement and there's a span and so we ought to be able to see class da 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 da. I don't see the Phoenix click on there. I wonder if it's because I didn't save. <laughs> and look at that, I didn't save at all. Okay, so now I've saved. Okay, and now I can reload this just to be sure. And now I can 
open this and we can go spelunking again and there's my spans and there's my phoenix click of decrement and the other one should have a phoenix click of increment and it does you see right here phoenix click increment and phoenix click of decrement so now we can go ahead and click increment ah but what's happening here our the wrong count is updating so i'm clicking increment and I'm still firing the counter on the original live view. And the reason is that we haven't targeted the event and that's easy enough to do. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're going back here. And so we're in the counter here and I need to add a Phoenix target. And that's going to be That means I want the component itself to manage these events. So we can't pass the ID, the, the table ID. That's not enough to target this event. We have to pass myself in order to target the individual component. But we've done so. And so now what should happen is when I come down here, Key myself is not found in the change. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, so this is telling us that key myself is not found in the assigns for the component. Oh, can it be that we have to pass that in ourselves? I think that we do. Uh, it's interesting when I was preparing this demo, I coded them in line, so I didn't need to pass them here. But let's see what happens if we do that. So let's say myself equals and then okay so my theory is that it's in this assigns but it's not in this one because we didn't add it and so if if that turns out to be the fact if, if this actually works then we'll just add that attribute and type it to any and make it required so let's go ahead and save that much so I'm going to bring, could it be that easy? <laughs> Look at that. Okay. So and what's interesting is now everywhere that I, that I include the component, we have the state for the component included in that overall socket. And that's a really cool thing because it allows each of my components to have its own state. Now I can start to tweak a little bit and clean up my design. So let's do that. So the first thing that I can do is I had these handle events that are now over here and we can delete these. So I can delete that. I don't need that anymore. I can delete the game itself, can't I? Let's see, the game grid probably still needs to belong here, but the mount doesn't need a count anymore, right? So that can go away. And we have the individual component that is up there. So now we could say something like, game night, game night scores so and then we could show all of the game night scores like that okay and this is a lot cleaner and look at the work that we've done so it turns out that this live view doesn't need to manage any special state at all all we need to do is pick up the default socket which was whatever was given to us in the first place. We don't do make any changes to it. So this is serving as a home page. And this function is mapping over all of the games that we want, all the games in the table that we want. All we're doing is calling an individual component. And the component that we call even lives in another module. And when we render a component, the ID is required, 
the module is required and the other assigns are optional, though your individual component may require them as well. And then let's see if there's any kind of cleanup that we can do here. So this is already pretty thin. We establish our socket. We render our overall card. And each card has a couple of buttons and they don't need to be buttons at all. In our case, these are just spans that are gray and you can click on them to count individual tables. And since these are targeted to an individual component and since my individual page created a component, it also allocates space for that component. So even though my components are going to run in the count live process itself, it still has its own capability to receive and process events based on the software. And that allows me to achieve an excellent layering that mixes across components that are function components and live components. And that lets me keep my user interface code as small and tight and clean. So let's think about what this allows us to do. I can build my overall live view that doesn't have to process any state itself, but it can if it needs to. I can layer my complexity to components. And this is a component that allows me to build a grid and then have additional complexity inside. This consumes the grid and then I plug my custom code into the middle and then I build 12 of these things and each one builds its live component, each one which will live in the count live but is capable of managing its own state. And then I can dive in and peel off a little bit more of that complexity onion. And I set up my initial state with the constructor. I render the state every time that it changes with a converter. And I change the state with a reducer. And every time that my code gets more complex, even if it's user interface code, I peel off another layer and put it in a function. That means that even though this is user interface code with direct HTML rendered inline, no individual bit of it is large at all. And that, my friends, is an excellent thing. For Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.